look what just arrived. These are these, 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 these. Five of my multi charge one cell lithium charge module prototype. It's not really a prototype of my module, it's a prototype of the charge circuitry that's on my multi charge board that I put together on a stream a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to assemble one of these and test it out and see if it works. Let's go. Okay, so let's get this built, shall we? Here is a stencil I prepared earlier. Once again, stencils from JLC PCB are bowed. No matter how they package them, they always come bowed. Perfect. I'm going to apologize about the wobbly desk with the microscope camera. But it is what it is, so we'll just have to deal with it. So many of these parts I've never used before, but they should be fairly straightforward. Okay, it's going to go that way. Might stick some resistors and capacitors in first. This is supposed to be a 2K, but I've only got 2.2K. I'll get some of these other parts back on now. This is the protection IC. Okay, this is the actual charge IC. This section over here is like a heat sink, exposed copper or ground to make sure that this IC doesn't get too hot when it's charging. A bit worried there might be a little bit too much paste over here. I guess we'll find out when it reflows. And this is another 2.2 that should be a 2. And these two are actually supposed to be 2.2K. The resistors for the LEDs. Okay, I'm using green LED for the full state. And I'm using an orange LED for the charge state. Okay, this is a 470 nanofarad cap. Okay, this is a 1 microfarad cap. And this is a 0 0.01 ohm resistor. It's a special current sensing resistor. I've never used one before. It looks slightly different to the normal resistors. Pretty cool. And these are... 10k pull up and pull down can't remember which one is which okay one last thing to put on is the JST connector I wish I could get JST connectors in black or grey I've been trying to source some through Alibaba but no one seems to have any okay so that's the board I'm going to reflow this now although I think this is sitting a little bit too high Bit better. Okay, time to put it in the oven and let's see what happens. Okay, here it is. It's still a little warm. I'm not going to touch it. It's going to do with tweezers. So let's have a look. Turn this around. So, oh, interesting. So we've got a bridge over here on the other side of where I thought we were going to get them. That side looked like there was too much paste. But other than that bridge, everything looks okay which is great. So I'm just going to have to fix this bridge. Cross this bridge when we come to it. Yeah. Going to fix the bridge and then we're going to solder some headers on, 90 degree headers, and then it's down to testing it. Okay, let me get the hot air station going. Okay, I'm going to try to do my flick 
clean up on this. Did everyone see David Watts' video? I think it was uh, this week or last week, started this week. He got himself a hot air station. Looks very much like mine, except mine's a combo, hot air and iron. And he hot aired my 2019 badge and did a great job. And look at that, I just did a great job. So I'll just let that cool down again. That is how you fix a bridge, the easy way. So yeah, it was a pretty great video. He had not used a hot air station before and he managed to build the badge and it worked great and he did it two sides, uh, good on him. And he was using paste that was three years old, almost three years old and <laughs> I wouldn't have done that, but it had never been opened, it had been in his fridge and it worked great. So good on you, Mr. David Watts. Welcome to the hot air reflow world. Pretty exciting. Okay, time to solder some pins on. Let's go. Before I solder the headers on and plug this in, I'm going to just beep it out and make sure there's no shorts. So I'm going to turn it over so I can read the labels because the labels are on the back. Okay, I've got my multimeter that says ouch. Lots of people comment about ouch. I don't know why it says ouch, but it's pretty damn funny. Cool. So we've got two grounds. Let's make sure ground is connected. Excellent. So SCL and SDA are not shorted to ground. Three volts is not, the GPIO out is not, TS is not, 5 volts is not, and I believe the program is not. No shorts. Excellent. There we go. Now I guess I'm going to put them on this way. A few people asked me when I was showing this on my stream, I've got staggered pins here, and I've used these before. So staggered pins means I can plug this in and it sits still, it doesn't fall out. So it makes it really easy to solder, which is really cool and it stays straight. So that is the way the module is going to work, at least for now. Plug into a breadboard like that. So let's solder this on. Might need to get something to put underneath. Maybe some blue tack or maybe some green tack. There you go. Just make sure I've got that straight. So I've got my TS100. Okay, here we go. Start with the prog pin. Okay, we'll just check it and make sure that it is still straight. Nothing worse than putting it on not straight. That is pretty good. Quite happy with that. Look at all the solder that came through. These holes are obviously really big. And the solder went right through. It's okay. I can do with that. Okay, let's get this done. I should be using a bigger tip, I know. I don't like using a fat tip on an iron. It does make it much easier to solder stuff like this. I think that looks okay. It's definitely okay for our tests now. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. So that is our little charge module that will go into a breadboard. Now I just need to get a breadboard and wire it up. So, this was almost the end of the video. This was almost as far as this went. Luckily, it's not quite the end. So, does the board work perfectly? No, it doesn't. Does it work enough to continue? It does. But I did make some mistakes on the design, and I'll explain what those mistakes were when we have a look at the schematics in the moment. But I was able to salvage most of the video slash project slash board for this and charge a battery with it. So I'm going to go over what mistakes I made, I'm going to show you how I fixed them, and I'm going to show you the board in action, and hopefully we can charge a battery with it. Okay, let's go. Okay, here's the schematics of the current design. Now, the two things that I got wrong, well, technically three things I got wrong. The first one, a just a placement issue, was that I put the battery voltage of the battery charge protection on the wrong side of this 100R resistor. So the resistor is supposed to be sitting between the VBAT and the IC, but I've got it on the wrong side and that's completely messing up the charging state and the full state of the battery. So that just requires moving this resistor to the other side over here, which I've done in a new design and I'll show you in a moment. 
I've proven that out anyway just by removing the resistor on the board and sticking a zero ohm resistor for now and that then fixes any charging and full state issues that I had. The second issue was I forgot to hook up the charger side of this sense resistor. So this is a 0.01 ohm special sense resistor and it's supposed to have VBAT, the battery in on one side and the charging system on the other side. I forgot to hook that up. Whoops. So that just means that the fuel gauge itself can't accurately detect what the charge is doing. It can detect what the battery voltage is, but it won't give me anything like the charging current or the charging power. So that's again, very easy fix. But the biggest mistake was when I originally designed this on the stream, I designed this first, which is correct. That's all fine. So here's the battery. Here's the protection circuit. Normally the protection circuit would be on the battery. That's okay. And then that gets hooked into the charge circuitry and the charge circuitry charges the battery through the protection. The problem is I then said, okay, I'm going to add a fuel gauge and I stuck the fuel gauge on the end in the schematic, which really doesn't make any difference. But because of that, I misimplemented the way that they sit together. So because I tacked it on, I just tacked it into the VBAT, which is also shared by the charger. And in fact, the other side of the sense pin goes to the charging circuit. So the charger charges the battery through the fuel gauge. And I didn't do it through the fuel gauge. I did it with the fuel gauge. So VBAT here is also connected to VBAT over here. And that's wrong. This should be VBAT sense or VBAT charge and should only be connected to this other side here, to the SRN of the 0.01 ohm resistor. Because of that mistake, the fuel gauge isn't giving the right information. So let's have a look at the revised schematic that I did. Okay, here's our revised schematic, and everything's the same, except for my own sanity, I've put the fuel gauge in between. So now I've got the charger on the left, and the battery and the battery protection on the right. So the charger connects to the battery via the fuel gauge. So you can see here now there's a BAT, which is VBAT charge, which connects to this side of the sense resistor. And then the battery itself, which is BAT plus, goes to this side of the sense resistor. And this 100R resistor is now on the correct side. So the battery comes in and straight out battery plus, and then 100R to the IC. So there are the changes implemented on the board. Otherwise, everything's the same. No layout on the board's changed. Let's have a look at the board sitting in a breadboard, charging the battery. So here it is. I'm using a tiny Pico just to be able to talk to it with I2C to read the fuel gauge. And I've got five volts going directly to the charge module. These are my I2C going through with some 10K pull-ups. And I've also got 3.3 volts going in as well. This is just a small 150 milliamp hour battery. And as you can see from the display next to this, from the Arduino IDE, that it's currently charging. You can see it just went to uh, 4.154 millivolts. It's able to read the millivolts okay. It's not able to detect the actual capacity of the battery properly. It thinks it's 136 milliamp hours and it can't read the milliamps or the milliwatts because of that sense pin arrangement. But as you can see, the charge I see is working and currently the charge lights on and the battery is there and it is going up. It's 4.155 now. If we let this run just for a little bit, hopefully we'll see it get to a full battery. Might take a little while because as it gets closer to 4.2, it's going to slow down. Ah, damn, I missed it. I wasn't watching. Sorry, folks. I was actually watching James Bruton's uh, last video about his multi-material printing with the Palette 2S, and I got so engrossed in it that I wasn't watching, and it ticked over to charge. Sorry about that. So, as you can see, the green LED is massively bright. I need to reduce that, so I need to stick a bigger resistor on there. But otherwise, there we go. It worked. So, conclusion time. So... I'm a little disappointed that I wired the fuel gauge up incorrectly, but at the end of the day, I was able to test that the charge circuitry works, and it does. 
and that's the most important part of this. The fuel gauge is there just for reporting back to a base station that I don't have yet. So I'm pretty happy with the results. I wish I would have got it right the first time, but you know, you can't win them all. I'm going to send the new board off to get made and I'll do a follow-up video about it once I've got it. I'm going to change a few things though. I'm going to, now that I've got it working like this, I'm going to continue modulizing it. That's not even a word. I'm going to probably swap out the protection IC at the top over here and the twin MOSFETs with an IC that actually has it all built in. So it's much less components. But the other thing I'm going to do on here is put a way to be able to detect what this module is. And there are a couple of ways I can do that. The easiest way is just to stick a couple of resistors on here that with a pin that goes out, so an extra pin. I'll either do an extra pin or take one of the grounds, maybe an extra pin, make the module a little bit longer. And that way I can encode what the board is into what the resistor divider is. And so therefore I can, based on the value coming out of the 3.3 volts through that divider, I'll be able to read on the microcontroller what board this is. So I'll be able to plug it in and it'll go, oh, this is a charging board because of the value. And it means that I could potentially make other types of boards that will fit in the same base station that can be detected as other things to do other things. Yeah. Or maybe potentially other people could design boards that go into the base station to do other tasks. Okay, thank you for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out, especially the follow-up to this. If you're already subscribed, it's awesome having you back. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed it. To my patrons, you're awesome. Thank you so much. And until next time, catch you later. Bye.